Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm here with our special guest today, Mustafa. How are you doing? How are you doing? He's been showing us around Turkey and actually helping us understand different things um, about Turkish history and also showing us some um, archaeological sites, connecting it with key points of history that should be coming up in other videos. Um, but uh, I mean, recently I was in the hotel room and um, I, I was doing some research, some very primary research or something, some surface research. I tried to go on Wikipedia and when I went on Wikipedia it wasn't allowing me to go on so I had this question is that how comes Wikipedia is not working in this country I realized it was banned so could you tell us first and foremost why Wikipedia is banned in Turkey uh, it's banned because of a court order yes. court order uh, as you know Wikipedia is probably one of the most uh, common sources where people go for information yeah. and it's also one of the most unreliable sources uh, of information because it's human edited yes. and there were uh, there were pages there were pages of uh, Turkish uh, history of Turkish governance of uh, Turkish uh, uh, values or people of uh, value to the Turkish society uh, with wrong information and there were court orders uh, for them to be changed or at least to be uh, uneditable and uh, Wikipedia did not uh, follow this up so uh, they found a more uh, drastic solution was to ban it altogether. Yes, I mean one of the main controversies that uh, interestingly those who are more and we don't like using this term but Islamists yes. and nationalists kind of agree upon here in Turkey is um, what's referred to in Western circles as the Armenian gen genocide a very controversial topic. Um, Turkey hasn't recognized uh, this as a genocide. I, mean, I don't think academic circles, historians like yourself, um, recognize this uh, as a genocide. W why is it referred to as a genocide by the West and why is it rejected as a genocide by um, academics like yourself? Well, uh, well, first of all, genocide is a, a lawful term. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a crime. Yes. And it's defined in the 1948 uh, genocide uh, convention uh, law. So yeah. to be able to uh, label an incident or a mass, mass atrocity as genocide, uh, there has to be a, a, a court process. Yes. So there's no such thing. Yes. And the term genocide was labeled by uh, Rafael Lemkin, a Polish Jewish uh, uh, lawyer. Uh, genocide, like homicide, suicide. So it's the uh, killing of a gene or of et some ethnic religious uh, group. Uh, there is no such thing as Turkey is rejecting it because uh, the Turkish archives are open, Turkish historians freely debate this. There are historians in Turkey who say what uh, happened in, during the First World War uh, can be labeled as a genocide. Right. Uh, but again, I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a term uh, uh, for the courts. I mean, uh, for the United Nations or for uh, international courts uh, to label it or to uh, prosecute. Uh, but again, on the other hand, we're talking about 1915, that's the Ottoman period, and Turkey is a new republic. Yes. Turkey is a new republic, uh, established in 1923. And you cannot apply such law uh, retrospectively uh, to some uh, uh, incident which happened 100 uh, years ago. If you were to do that, there are a lot of uh, countries around the world who should also apply to themselves. Right, now, um, in terms of the history, I think, a general overview of the history as taught by, say for example, or, or as taught in British education systems and maybe even Western education systems, uh, generally speaking, is that um, ever since um, uh, Abdul Hamid II, you know, 1860 uh, and so on, there has been this kind of demonization of the Armenian population, which resulted in um, Abdul Hamid II kind of making threats uh, and so on, and at, at the end of it, in 1915 it culminated you know in the um, what they refer to as a genocide and they say that one point up to 1.5 million Armenians were killed anything between 600,000 to 1.5 million because of um, because of their race uh, so w that's the thesis that they put forward what is the counter thesis here I mean uh, there are so many and there are too many yeah just to give you a few examples yeah uh, during the First World War, if the Ottomans or the Ottoman Turks or the Ottoman administration had an intent to wipe the Armenians off the uh, map or uh, get rid 
of them uh, from Turkey. Yes. Uh, uh, they would not have appointed uh, Armenians as ambassadors, as Ottoman ambassadors to the United States. Okay. And they would not have been in key roles. First, you would remove uh, Armenians who were in key roles of Ottoman administration, and then uh, gradually uh, wipe out the population. And I mean, there are, I mean, countless, numerous examples. For example, in 1919, American military uh, commission uh, visits Turkey after the First World War and the collapse of the or the capitulation of the Ottoman Empire in 1918. A year later, uh, and it is expressed by the Armenian Patriarch in Istanbul that there are 900,000 Armenians currently living in Turkey. This is. Uh, these are official figures given by the Armenian Patriarch, reported by the Americans to be taken back to uh, America, uh, that, that there are 900,000 Americans, uh, uh, Armenians living in uh, Turkey. So, I mean, I've got, I mean, I mean the numbers don't add up. Uh, right. The story doesn't add up. In terms of um, accessibility to the region, I mean, we're talking about in this period of time, obviously World War One was happening, 1914 to 1918. And this supposedly, I mean, this is being said to have happened in 1915. So obviously, in terms of um, accessibility to the region and primary source materials, we can then extrapolate thereafter. To what extent have we got uh, primary source materials which are reliable from either side? Well, uh, let's assume for a minute that the Turks are not reliable. And uh, yeah. again, there are countless foreign uh, sources in 1918. When the Ottoman Empire uh, was defeated in the First World War, Istanbul was occupied by the Allied forces. And I'm talking about the British, the Bosphorus were on there. Uh, you had uh, French. Which is what we're on right now. Yes, that's right. Yes. Uh, you had uh, British, uh, French, American, uh, Greek, Italian naval ships uh, docked right in front of uh, Dolmabahce Palace, yes. which is where the Ottoman Sultans uh, were uh, living. Yes. And in, from 1918 onwards, there was no Turkish authority. And the British, the Italians, the French, etc., they had the opportunity uh, to find... See, the word genocide is the intent to kill or wipe off the map a certain race. So where's the orders? Where's the evidence? So this was all propaganda uh, which started by the British uh, in 1916. Arnold Toynbee is also a very famous figure in England, the uh, director of Chatham House. He's also known as uh, one of the leading scholars of uh, contemporary history. history yeah, yeah. Uh, He wrote the British, uh, the Blue Book, the propaganda book. Right. And nowadays, you know, with the technology and with the communication being so easy, when scholars, uh, academics cross-examine the things he wrote on the days, on the weeks, on the months he wrote, there's nothing like it because there's uh, reports by other foreigners which actually refute or say exactly the opposite of uh, what Arnold Toynbee writes. Does Toynbee actually, does Toynbee actually come to um, Turkey at any point uh, as a journalist in some capacity and does he report anything? Uh, not during the First World War, after the First World War. So what he's reporting, what he wrote during in 1916. Yes. And if you read the Blue Book, uh, it's still available. You can get it on the internet as well. Uh, it's not difficult to understand that it's purely propaganda uh, because it's all hearsay, eyewitness accounts and some, even if you add up the numbers of uh, the Armenians and, that have said to be uh, killed, it adds up to more than 2 million in his book in 1916. And this genocide is supposedly uh, had gone on until 1923. So, I mean, these are just simple things that, uh, like a house of uh, cards. I mean, it just it just crumbles wherever you pick it from. But yes, he did come to Turkey in 1919, uh, uh, or it could be a year later, and uh, he reported what he saw in Turkey uh, back to England, uh, back to his newspaper. And Turkey was fighting the Greek Turkish war because it was under Greek invasion, supported by the British. He actually reported Greek atrocities and what would have been labeled as a genocide on innocent and civilian Turks uh, in Anatolia, where in the places he traveled. Yeah. And he reports that. Yes, okay. he reports Is that, that still... But, yes, he reports that, but uh, it doesn't get any coverage in uh, the British papers, because the British are 
uh, financially and militarily supporting the Greek uh, invasion of Turkey. So the Greeks were used as a proxy uh, to continue the fights uh, against uh, the Turks. So you're saying that the British, because of their propaganda efforts in World War One, were using um, were using this as a kind of pretense. Yeah, it's a soft power. I mean, they use it as a leverage. Yes. It comes up every to, now to and numb then. the population. Yes. Every now and then to make the population feel guilty. Uh, to use it as a bargaining chip in the international uh, arena. Uh, obviously, no one. It's a stigma. I mean, no one wants to be labeled, uh, or no one wants. Uh, to be labeled the grand, I mean, the, the, uh, the generation of uh, 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 genocide, the uh, uh, genocidal. But again, I mean, <coughs> one interesting, very interesting thing is the Australians and New Zealanders, ANZACs, or what uh, that was the uh, uh, idea of uh, Winston Churchill when he was the, naval, uh, the commander of the uh, Navy. Australians commemorate their most important day, Anzac Day, that's their national day, that's their national pride. On Anzac Day on Turkish soil. Now imagine that. Uh, they're commemorating their most important day on a, uh, in a country which they came to invade uh, on 1915, uh, 25th of April. So, and how did this uh, come about or how did this happen? After a while, they started to interact with the Turks during ceasefire. They exchanged uh, uh, food, they exchanged tobacco, etc., etc., etc. And they, were, they wrote back to their families. They wrote back to the uh, to their uh, countries, and they said uh, the Johnny Turk. That's what they call the Turks in uh, the Gallipoli War. Uh, that the Turks would not fire on the Anzac trenches when there was a, a hospital ship behind them. So in order not to, uh, to cause an accident, that the Turks fought a gentleman, uh, gentleman's war and they came about to respect the Turk. I mean, these are two fighting sides. So can you see, 24th of April, 1915, is when the Armenians claimed that the genocide began. And 25th of April, 1915, I'm talking about the same, like there's only 24 hours difference. The Australians are talking, Australian and New Zealanders are reporting about the uh, the bravery and the respect they showed for the Turkish soldier and they're commemorating their most important day. So these soldiers, how were they genocidal to the Armenians or to the Christians and how were they, how were, how, how were they respectful and humane even in a war uh, to the Anzacs? And that's something which I found quite um, inconsistent as well in the narratives because I, when, when you look at some of the things that they were saying it seems like they want to portray this as a religious problem, saying that it's, 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 it's a Christian uh, genocide, but uh, at the same time, obviously... Yeah, it's to paint, it's to paint the Muslims. No, yes, of course, but what, what I meant to say is that the Ottoman Empire were allied to Austria-Hungary and Germany were two Christian powers. That's one issue. Uh, another issue is, of course, ever since maybe the, the early 1900s, 19 maybe uh, or eight or something like that, you had the Young Turks, which were a nationalistic group. So the, the overriding n narrative, how could it be Islam versus Christianity when the whole point of nationalism was to prioritize national identity? So it's, for me, it's all convoluted and contradictory. I mean, how, what, what, do you, what do you have to say about this? Yeah, I mean, uh, Talat Pasha, Talat Pasha, one of the three generals which the Armenians uh, claim of, or accuse of having orchestrated the Armenian genocide, he was uh, one of the three leaders of the Young Turks, uh, Talat Pasha, and he was the interior minister during the First World War. Okay, so does this not seem contradictory? If Talat Pasha gave orders to uh, massacre the Armenians, uh, civilians, etc., there are archival documents in English, in, uh, very translated to all different languages, official documents, that he gave orders to protect Armenians. What the Turks did was to move the Armenians who were supporting the Russians, who were supporting the French. There were French uh, legions uh, uh, consisted of uh, purely Armenians. There are Russian uh, uh, regiments of Armenians. And, uh, and this is open. I mean, they're very proud of this, uh, of their heritage. And these people that led these Armenian regiments are now uh, Armenian national heroes. And these people were born in Turkey. So, yes, I mean, uh, Christianity uh, or religion played a role in a sense that the, uh, the Russians, the British, 
the Americans, the French, manipulated the Armenians against their Turkish neighbors. And yes, religion played an important role, but uh, the idea that uh, it's, it's got nothing to do with nationalism because Talat Pasha was a nationalist leader, uh, one of the young Turks. Yes. And there are pages, if not volumes, of documents of Talat Pasha sending orders, not only orders uh, to protect the Armenians who were uh, acting as a fifth column uh, against the Ottoman uh, troops, but there are uh, orders where he wants those who have harmed the Armenians to be prosecuted and even to be hung. So, so the, if you imagine Hitler, I mean, when we talk about the Holocaust, yes. imagine Hitler uh, trying to wipe off the Jews off the map, but on the other hand, he's sending orders uh, to protect uh, the Jews. So there is not a single document, a single word, a credible source from an Ottoman authority to say, harm the Armenians. Not a single word. I would like to see it if there is, and everyone would like to see it. But on the contrary, there's a lot of uh, effort to protect the Armenians. Is, is, there, is, is there also an admission at this point that the Armenians were at war with the Ottomans, and therefore you had casualties of war and so on? Yes, but the Armenians were uh, were a part of the millet system. They were subjects of the Ottoman Empire, and so they, they were not at uh, war with the Ottomans because they were Ottoman citizens. Okay. But a certain nationalist uh, element within the Armenian society uh, manipulated the general Armenian society. And uh, there are articles in the New York Times in the American papers in 1915, in 1916, the Ar Armenians who have reached America during those times, they have terrorized Armenians in America, in France, to uh, get financial support. So it's, 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 it's become more like an industry. Uh, it's interesting you mentioned the New York Times because I find out that it wasn't until 2005 that the New York Times actually started using the, the term Armenian Genocide. Now, is there any political reasons you could think of that maybe swung the pendulum? Uh, obviously, there's some uh, intent. There's some intent. I mean, New York Times, Washington Post, uh, these are these are, uh, these are also working with uh, government agencies, as, as we all know. So these, uh, there's, I mean, gradually throughout that is social engineering to put the word out genocide, 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 and if you tell a lie a thousand times, it becomes a uh, truth. So uh, how credible is New York Times, or do we take it at face value that they use the word genocide? But just recently, a couple of years ago, the, uh, the European uh, Court of Human Rights overturned the prosecution of uh, a Turkish nationalist who was sentenced, I think it was in uh, Switzerland, who was sentenced uh, for denying the Armenian Genocide, so-called Armenian Genocide, and uh, the European Court of Human Rights declared that uh, there was no racial connotation to deny a part of history and to call it uh, an imperialist. That's exactly the phrase he used. He said it's an imperialist propaganda. Yes. And to call something an, an imperialist propaganda doesn't mean you're denying anything or you're accepting anything, but to deny, to say that uh, uh, genocide is not the word uh, that can be used here. Uh, shouldn't be punished by law because it's a free. Uh, it, 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 it shuts debate. Right. It shuts debate. Do you think that uh, there has been that kind of? On the one hand, they're talking about freedom of speech, but when, when it comes to the Turkish position on this matter, it's almost even secondary now. And there's, there's an intentional effort to shut down free speech in their own. World view now. Yeah, I mean that's 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 pretty obvious. I mean uh, they're hi hypocritical. They're hypocritical. And in Turkey, there are so many scholars and academics who openly uh, support the Armenian cause or Armenian thesis. And uh, there, are, on the other hand, there are to uh, so many that uh, object it, and they can openly debate things like that. But have you ever seen an, two Armenian historians, and not only our current uh, president, but our previous uh, governments uh, have always openly said to the Armenian side that if you send your scholars, let's have third parties, fourth parties, fifth parties, let's form a, uh, a, a consensus and a, a group of academics and they can debate this uh, and let people make the judgment. Well, on that, I thank you very much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.